and long before social let us flex on each other. We did it by the things we wore, by the things we drove, by the stories we told at the PTA. Most, most people continue to parent their children based on what they think other people think of them, not by listening to their actual children. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? I'm, I'm unbelievably humbled to be speaking at this event. Uh, just what an extraordinary collection of people. And I hope I get to say hello to all of you before I get out of here. Um, what I'm about to talk about is predicated on the fact that over the last three to four years, off of a pretty sizable base of uh, followers, engagers on social, my awareness grew exponentially over platforms that skewed younger. And as my attention on Instagram and YouTube grew aggressively over these 36 months, uh, what ended up happening was a lot of the people that I was interacting with got younger and younger and younger. What I want to talk about today is predicated on me reading hundreds of thousands of direct messages over the last three years. What I want to talk about today is not predicated on my opinion, it's an observation from one person, one man's point of view. It's also the observation of somebody who is so deeply grateful for the remarkable way that I feel that my mother <clears throat> parented me uh, and my father and the circumstances of being an immigrant born in Belarus, uh, coming to the United States and going through that struggle. I believe that so much of what every single person in this audience cares deeply about trying to affect and so many of the characteristics that we are passionate about, whether it's empathy or kindness or gratitude, needs to have a remarkable conversation with ourselves around a word called entitlement. Entitlement is not privilege. Entitlement's a very important word for all of us because it is foundational in the starting point to all the other things we've been talking about over the last two days. Entitlement is also gonna be very difficult for all of us to talk about in this room because it means we have to look at ourselves, not look at the people that we're imposing it on. Over the last three years, I have received hundreds of thousands of messages from 15 to 25 year olds telling me variations of stories of how much they love and appreciate their parents deeply, but deep down they resent them and or hate them so much because while they continue to take their unlimited Uber from their parents, while they continue to take a brand new BMW on their 17th birthday, while they continue to be thrilled that their parents bought them their first apartment in New York City, or much smaller things like a first class plane ticket or something of that degree, they inherently deeply understand that they are a zoo animal and are completely unprepared to actually live in the world. This is very difficult because so many, like myself, come from places where you start with nothing. Half this audience came from the dirt, the others had parents or grandparents that did. This is deep within us that once you tasted garbage, you have no interest in letting your children taste it. This is not judgment. You're looking at a man who's run two companies now and the number one vulnerability I've had running these two companies successfully is I personally created too much entitlement with my organizations because I don't like conflict. I struggle with radical candor. I'm a tough guy on Instagram, but in real life, I just want to take all the pressure and do it myself and put everybody in a happy place because happiness deploys better success until it overcorrects. We have a whole culture that is disproportionately judging the youth, literally judging the youth that they parented. My friends, for us to look at this and understand what's actually happening, we have to understand that so many in today's society and long before social let us flex on each other, we did it by the things we wore, by the things we drove, by the stories we told at the PTA, most. Most people continue to parent their children based on what they think other people think of them, not by listening to their actual children. This is a very important conversation. 
we cannot get to the path of all the other talks that we've been listening to without eliminating entitlement. It is very difficult to be empathetic or grateful without eliminating entitlement. We must put accountability on a pedestal. We must destroy eighth place trophies. That doesn't mean that we don't admire effort, but results matter in life. My mother gave me so much self-esteem that it makes some people not like me. However, she equaled that with uncomfortable amounts of accountability. When I went 0 for 4 in a baseball game and struck out four times, it wasn't the son's fault. It wasn't my coach's fault. She looked me in the face and said, you sucked. (laughs) It didn't taste great. It must have not been fun for her to deliver, but my deep, deep happiness is predicated on her sucking out every piece of entitlement out of my body, my deep capacity to be empathetic and grateful, which transforms in what most people see is somebody who markets. But in the way I navigate my life and the way that I market to the end consumer, my unbelievable opportunity to speak in front of this crowd today is predicated on listening. I talk, you listen to my podcast, I interrupt every single person that is on my show because I've already heard what they said and I just want to move it along and we don't edit. It seems mean, it seems audacious, it's deeply based on listening. We have to start the process of listening to the youth. They're telling us the answers, you just care what your neighbor thinks about your kid. You just care about what your mother thinks about your kid. You just care about what your sister thinks about your kid. You need to start listening to your kid. When this little hubbub that popped up about USC and other colleges, this was no surprise to me. There was no shock behind this. We are a mass society predicated on overreacting to other people's judgment. We are awfully good at judging. We are awfully good at judging. We have to start the conversation around entitlement. Entitlement's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. Because it's not a lot of fun for people that are trying to do good to really look at it. There's a whole lot of people that clap for Greta's talk and then act a different way the next day. We all know that. The hypocrisy is heavy. Some things are really lofty. It's hard to boil the ocean. But the truth is, you can absolutely start with yourself. And let me promise you, the deep happiness in perpetuity that you will have if you start with your child will change the course of your life. I've seen this up close with my siblings. I've seen this through the eyes of hundreds of thousands of people who I've talked to yesterday. The resentment is palpable. More importantly, They genuinely believe that you do not believe in them because you're subsidizing their behavior. Fake environments were the seed that led us to the uncomfortable place we're in, predicated on an enormous amount of money and happiness in the macro over the last 70 years. And much like in our venture community, where people no longer actually build businesses, but they're building financial arbitrage machines to raise capital, and spend zero time caring about their consumer and 100% of their time caring about venture capitalists and press. We equally have a community of parents worried about what other people think instead of how their kids feel. It is also why the marketing world is massively audacious. We are entitled to think somebody wants to watch our video just because we made it. We have to have a much, much, deeper conversation about entitlement, and when we do, all the other beautiful words that have been spoken in the last two days will start to fall into place. Thank you. Thank you.